Now look, this will be the last time I say this in 2018, so you gotta hear it. Here's to fill us in with the film and TV news. It's a rise correspondent, Judita De Silva, who joins me once again from our studios in London. Hi, Judita. So definitely we are excited to have you on the show. And please, it breaks my heart that it's the last time I'm going to say this. In 2018, it makes you just want to cry. <laughs> no, we'll do it in 2019. Don't worry. All right. And we'll look younger in 2018 Ooh. as well. Give them. Okay, so let's start with TV, exactly. So there's <laughs> going to be a televised tribute for Aretha Franklin and all the great musicians have one. And you have some new details on this, don't you? Yes, so we found out that um, Tyler Perry, the media mogul, is going to be hosting this televised event. Because remember that every, every big star has had one of these, and the big controversy about when Michael Jackson passed away was that his family couldn't put together one for him. But the turnover for this has been very quick, and the reason why is the, it's a collective production between the CBS network, AEG, that does all the big concerts, Clive Davis, the music mogul behind Arista Records, and the Grammys Academy. Academy. And Aretha Franklin was an 18-time Grammy winner, so she's very dear and respected to so many people. They're saying they're going to film it on January 13th, and then it'll be televised later on on the CBS network. And remember from Aretha Franklin's funeral that m huge stars performed at that, and that was at her local gospel church. And you had people like Gladys Knight, Smokey Robinson, Fantasia Barino. But they said that just some, there's going to be lots of performers, but just some of the performers at this tribute concert would include Celine Dion, Jennifer Hudson, Alicia Keys, John Legend, Patti LaBelle, Janelle Monet, and SZA, just to name a few. So everyone is very excited about this, and it's going to be an incredible night of music. Absolutely. So, Judita, I'm looking at this in the sense that, you know, we lost the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, back in August. And, you know, this is December. It's a festive period. So do you feel perhaps this is just a way of people to just basically people just saying, look, this is not something that we have gotten over with it's not something that we're getting getting over with anytime soon we just we just cannot wait to say okay it's an anniversary or it's some type of celebration or something we just need to do something to just put the queen of soul in our minds once again I think it's, yeah, it's exactly that. It's going to be balancing out the positive and the negative of the narrative because if you think about it, like us, like so many networks around the world, everybody's doing their end of year roundups. And part of that is going to be their in memoriam section where they remember all the people who passed away this year. And one of the biggest losses was Aretha Franklin. So to balance the negativity of that, they put out the positive message of saying this tribute is going to be coming at the start of next year. So you mm. end on saying goodbye, but begin on a we will always remember. So it's a very good thing to do. Amazing. Okay, now look, this one has got me dancing because, you know, anything that has got the name Idris Elba in it is like, yes, honey, tell me more. So now, is it true that in 2019 we can look forward to Idris Elba making a leap into the television family? Yes, we heard about this back in April. So then towards the end of the year, I was thinking that this is going to be our last 2018 chat. I've got to give Catchy something to look forward to for 2019. <laughs> and so I said, it's got to be Idris. So Netflix, like many networks, they put out their slate of what to expect in 2019. And I was going, combing through the pages, and I said, yes. Idris Elba. Mm. It is definitely going to happen. They're not given the exact date it will be debuting, but it's going to be a comedy series titled Turn Up Charlie. He plays a struggling DJ, and we all remember that Idris Elba's career began as a bootleg DJ, and he still does that to this. He now does it to this, this day, but obviously he's famous now. Mm -hmm. And so he's going to be playing, um, he moves into the house of his best friend and ends up being the babysitter to his very problematic daughter. So it's a TV series. It's going to be exclusively on Netflix, and it's a comedy and it will be produced by Idris Elba as well as starring him. And we know that he's moving behind the camera a lot. He produces Luther for the BBC. Mm -hmm. He also directed for the first time on his movie Yardi. So he's starting to kind of move to the next phase of his career. Absolutely. I mean, having, you know, Idris Elba on a weekly basis on television, that would be immensely amazing. <laughs> now, let's talk about this case. It's, it's regards to, you know, Kevin Spacey. It's almost as if things are going from bad to worse. I mean, things are just spiraling out of control yes. now. So what is the new update on his situation? 
Oh, gosh, this is not good. So we, you said, we spoke about, this, spoke about this yesterday and you told the news that he's going to be arraigned on the 7th of January because he was accused of sexual assault. It was this 18-year-old busboy at a restaurant back in 2016. He said he was working there, noticed Kevin Spacey was in the bar, and so he went after his shift, changed into his own clothes, and then went to say hello. And over the course of that, um, he told, he lied to Kevin Spacey and said he was 23. And then he ended up, Kevin Spacey bought him a few drinks, and then allegedly they, there was a sexual assault where he was groped by Kevin Spacey outside but then some people have said that they corroborate his story that would be his girlfriend and his girlfriend's friend and sorry and his sister but other people who were at the restaurant that night said they didn't see any assault happen but what the new information is is the police investigating this have said that they have video evidence because allegedly the 18 year old the former 18 year old accuser said that he videoed on Snapchat part of the assault happening. But what has happened is the lawyers of Kevin Spacey have actually seen the video and told the court that nothing illegal has happened in the video. All you see is a hand touching someone's chest, and that's it. But based on this, um, the terms of this, he's actually going to be going up against serious charges for Kevin Spacey. We talked about his reaction on that video he made yesterday. So it just, it is not very good, because remember, in addition to this, there are two charges of sexual assault also being investigated in Los Angeles. Angeles and in England at the same time. So on every corner for Kevin Spacey, it just doesn't look good. But hopefully his lawyers seem to be positive that this video evidence that everyone's talking about isn't really detrimental to his defense. All right. Well, I mean, he just brought out that video, let me be frank, and now this happening to conflicting situations. But like you said, let's see how this all plays out. Now, another person I'm really, really excited about is Angelina. Yes, she has made a very, very surprising revelation that she wants to delve into politics. Now, why do you think she came out with this right now? Okay, it's kind of a multitude of things. She was on um, doing this show on BBC Radio called The Today Show, and then the host was interviewing her and then asked whether she would think, think about politics, and she said that if she had asked her that 20 years ago, she would have laughed it off. But now she, go, she feels that she would go where she is needed. She's going to keep quiet for the time being, but then he said that, would, do you see yourself going up as one of the 30 to 40 Democratic candidates for next year's presidential, the Democratic presidential nomination? And and she didn't deny it. She just said, thank you. So everyone's kind of um, waiting and seeing what she means by this. Because remember, on the inside scoop that I have about this, um, during the break, the big news about the break between her and Brad Pitt, mm. there was a lot of talk that people didn't know about, about Angelina wanting to bring her children over to the UK. Mm. Insiders on in Angelina's camp said that the reason she wanted to do that was because she wanted to move into politics, starting with getting a higher position in the UN, because right now she's a UN ambassador, and she works a lot with refugees and conservation and things like that. So she was always moving in that direction. And so obviously with the custody case, that didn't come through. But this is something that has been part of her narrative on the down low for several years. So her saying this now is not much of a shock, because remember now, with the Democratic Party, the playing field is kind of swung open because Trump has brought in an era where anything is possible. So somebody like Angelina Jolie having this kind of conversation now, it fits in with the narrative of the times where people are thinking anything is possible. Because things like um, Ronald Reagan and then Arnold Schwarzenegger were mm -hmm. thing, things like lightning in a bottle. Those were rarities. But with Trump, Again, I say it, anything's possible. Honestly, please say that again. Anything is possible. You took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Anyways, Judita, one other thing I want you to do right now is please surprise us and give us some goodness once again by telling us the final video for 2018. What would it be? Okay, I was thinking what to do. I thought I should do something a bit romantic, but then we're in this whole feminist era, so I thought yeah. I'd cap off the year with something that talks to that. It's based on a true story. It stars Karen Knightley. It's coming out next year, and it is called Colette, and I hope you enjoy it, and see you in 2019. Introduced to my new wife, Colette. The wild days are done, eh? On the contrary, the wild days have just begun. <laughs> You've married a literary entrepreneur. You've married a country girl without a penny to her name. We're doomed, aren't we? <laughs> Willie is a brand. I take all the risk and there's still no money. We need more output. You, you could write.
my school stories. Yes, that could be Willie's next novel. Are you writing for him too? Yes. He's made you one of his ghosts already. My name is Claudine. I live in Montigny. I shall probably not die there. It's beautiful. We've never had one fly off the shelves like this before. And you know who's buying it? Young women. Really? Louis, your book will change the world! It's Claudine! Subtle as ever. I have a little plan to turn Claudine into the most popular girl in the entire world. I believe Willie based Claudine on your school days. Yes, I think I had a little something to contribute. Finally, we have a success, and then you imply that I'm not the true author of it. People love to talk. I understand the mentality here. You don't. I understand it well enough to write a book that's a toast to Paris. You've done something important. All those young girls, we've given them a voice. You should own up to it. He was after you. Your jealousy is misplaced. How so? It was the wife I found interesting. We're holding dynamite here. It could blow our bloody heads off. Since when have you considered scandal to be a bad thing? Oh, how interesting. Your love line splits into three. Must get used to marriage. Better to make marriage get used to you. People are begging for more. I don't want to write another Claudine. Are you out of your mind? Right! You bastard! No one can take away who you are. Destroy these. Incinerate them. You found me when I knew nothing. You molded me to your own desires. And you thought that I could never break free. Well, you're wrong. The hand that holds the pen writes history. And that was Colette. Well, that is all from Judith De Silva at our studios in London. And it is almost the end of the show. But before we go, here are a couple of things that you can enjoy this weekend. Now, if after all that Christmas food, you still have the energy to go out, then we recommend you go check out the new Nollywood comedy starring actor and political hopeful Banky Wellington. It is called Up North and it is out in cinemas this weekend. Now, if you would rather stay home, relax, not do anything crazy, then why not watch the first feature-length standalone movie from the successful Black Mirror franchise? We talked about it earlier, and it is, of course, Black Mirror Bandersnatch, and it is out on Netflix this weekend as well. Oh, and with that, we have come to the end of today's show. Honestly, it has been an amazing, super-duper run. And from all of us here in Lagos and over in London, thank you for watching. Now, don't forget this. It's really important. You can catch us every single weekday at 4 p.m. right here on the Arise News Channel. So, until next time, I am Kachi Ophir, and this right here has been Arise 360. Have a great weekend.